G'day guys and welcome to my review of the NS Panel Pro when used with Home Assistant Server. Um, I've been using one of these panels now for about 12 months. Um, I have delayed this review deliberately uh, to give a better impression of the panel after a significant period of use, uh, which I've now done. What I will note uh, straight off the bat is that this review was almost uh, very different. Um, and Part of the reason for this is the panel uh, in my apartment spent a lot of time in a uh, failed state, so it would be unable to connect to the Home Assistant server um, if it booted up whilst the Home Assistant server was also booting up. This happened after every power loss, um, which meant, like I said, the device spent a lot of time in this state. Uh, additionally, to solve this, because this is plugged into mains power, it required a power cycle of that specific circuit, um, which was an absolute pain. Uh, so like I said, this, this device spent a bunch of time in this state. Now, ironically, uh, it turned out that this was actually very easily solved. And I'm gonna take you through as a bit of a bonus how to solve this issue today. Um, as it was not included in any of the tutorials that I read when it came to setting this up, but it is absolutely essential um, if you're planning on using this device with Home Assistant Server uh, to do this. So I'm going to take you through now and a full setup video will come in the uh, next period of time. All right, guys, so what we do uh, to set this up and get it working as we want is, is we add a Android debug integration um, in. So come into your settings, go to your integrations, add integration, and then Android Debug Bridge. Uh, you want it set to auto and then just type your IP address in here. Once you've done that, um, click through a couple of boxes. It's pretty self-explanatory, the ones you want to click. And once that's done, you're pretty much good to go. So uh, the next bit you want to do is you want to go back, and I'm just going to back out of this because I already have the device added. You want to come down and add an automation in this instance, just create a new blank one. The trigger you want is Home Assistant Start, and then come down to Actions, Call Service, Android Debug Bridge Command. I've done that. You come down, you select your device. <clears throat> in this case, I've only got one connected. Uh, and then under Command, you type ADB Shell Reboot and Save. What this will do then is each time that you start the uh, device from now on, it will uh, it will automatically reboot the panel, um, which will prevent you going into this state here. So moving on, how did I actually find the device noting uh, once this problem was uh, taken care of? And it's set up in my um, like kitchen area at the moment. Um, and it has a bunch of different things on it. You set up your standard um, uh, panels that you can uh, through Home Assistant, and it gives you the ability to basically um, act this as if it's uh, from your mobile app, but obviously from the wall. Um, for me, one of the biggest bonuses for this one is that it is very easy to root and install a new OS on top of it. Um, and once you've done this, the integration with uh, Home Assistant is absolutely seamless. Um, like I said, so I use mine, it's connected into my doorbell so I can see who's at the door when uh, someone hits the door. It gives me um, weather information and to be honest, anything that you can put into a card in Home Assistant can obviously appear in this, uh, including in my instance, uh, live views of the front door. The couple of cons that I looked at is, firstly, if and a couple of these are if you're not jailbreaking, then one is if you are jailbreaking. The first one being, it's a cloud-based solution for the software if you're not jailbreaking this. And to me, there are a lot of privacy concerns about this, especially given you know where in the world this is made. So I obviously jailbreak this panel straight away and then blocked its IP address access to the web because it has no need to access the web. So that is completely taken care of. Um, the second one is the processor in this is not the greatest in the world if you're trying to do complex stuff. And in fact, um, its response time 
for me outside of its home assistant usages was not great and impacted um, my user experience of it. However, once it was fully rooted, once it was put into purely a home assistant use, it's been absolutely fine. So if it's rooted in and used as a home assistant panel, uh, absolutely no issues. And I'm sure the uh, original software too, if you're using it just as a switch, it is probably okay. But if you're trying to um, do anything more complex with it, then you may have issues. Uh, and then lastly, at the moment, um, once it was jailbreaked, I was unable to get Zigbee working on it again. Um, so if you're looking at using this to control Zigbee devices, then you need to keep it unjailbroken, uh, which I just I don't see the point in doing. It's it's not as functional if it if it is to my to my uh, views. So overall, how do I see this thing? I reckon that this is an absolutely essential product if you have a home assistant setup. Um, absolutely highly recommend. Um, the only bit I will say is you need to have a little bit of technical nous because um, the installation process can be a little bit of a pain. Uh, not terribly, but a little bit. Um, and like I said, I wouldn't use this in its unjailbroken form, but as a home assistant um, add-on once jailbroken, it is almost essential. Anyway, guys, uh, that's my thoughts on it. I'm putting together at the moment a, a complete installation and setup, noting the additional part about the restart uh, will be added to the end of my video. So guys, if you want to um, check out how to set up one of these or how I set it up, then that video will be coming out shortly. Anyway, guys, as always, um, have yourself a great day and stay safe out there.